Hello friends, Wakeman here. Today I would like to talk about the battle for your mind. Narcissist abuse survivors can easily identify with what I say here. Narcissists want to hijack your mind so that you become a subservient supply for these demons. This happens because they are operating under Satan's directly influence, being themselves minions for the first narcissist. A violent battle is raging around us 24 hours per day. Look at all that's going on in the world and how biblical prophetic events are increasing in frequency and intensity. The enemy does not want you to understand he is about to be revealed and crowned so that people believe in the Antichrist as a messiah. The battle for your mind is to steer you away from the truth. The truth from God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Our true struggle is against powers and principalities and God wants you to be strong. There are many things to fight in this world. For instance you can fight sickness, fatigue, death of loved ones, failure of your plans and hopes, questions without answers, and pain without reason. Yes we fight in this world. But we also fight in the spiritual world. It is Satan who opposes you. It is he who seeks to sift you and destroy your bodies and souls in the eternal blackness that will be his unending grave of torment. God wants you to be strong in him because you are in a spiritual battle against the powerful forces of darkness. This spiritual battle can only be won, first of all, by putting on his armor. In order for you to be strong, in order for you to fight the good fight of the faith, you must put on faith, righteousness, and salvation. You must use the gospel, which is the word of God, and last, but not least, you must pray. Will you be faithful? Will you trust in God and rest in His provision for victory in Christ? You must decide and take action. The Christian life is not just knowing, it's being and doing. I am including two videos to further inspire you to be bold and courageous to win the battle for your mind through Jesus Christ. I know the attacks are becoming fierce and intense. However, we will cross the finish line victoriously. Would you want me to pray for you? If so, Please leave your request in the comments section below. God bless you. Please, remember. Jesus Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. Imagine, in certain parts of the world, people are waking up to horrific scenes like this. <laughs> We may not be able to relate to a physical battle, but we are all in a spiritual battle for our souls. The enemy has an assignment to destabilize our minds, and once he's done that, kill us. But Ephesians 6 verse 13 reads, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. The battle for your mind. Because we are all that is left to stay the hand of God's judgment on this nation. Hear me on this. We're all that's left. There's no political party. There's no new preacher. There's nothing going to have this nation is on a collision course with Almighty God himself. And there's nothing left to stop it from where it's going but you and me. Coming in boldly, as Hebrews tells us to do, to the throne room of grace. And saying, God, I'm not here just for myself. Thank you, God, for winning this victory. But I'm here for my city. I'm here for my family. I'm here for my friends. I'm here for my enemies. I'm here, God. For those that don't even know who you are, I'm here to cast down in the name of Jesus Christ the thoughts that are holding them captive and keeping them from the salvation that's freely offered them in Christ Jesus. That's why, folks, we've got to pray like we've never prayed before. This is not an hour for play, to play. It's an hour to pray. It's an hour to come into the throne room of God. It's an hour to be filled with faith. It's an hour to stand like Moses stood before Pharaoh and say, no deals with you. 
It's an hour to come to the throne of God, not in our strength, but in our weakness. Not with a, a history of our faithfulness, but with a recognition that God's mercy has covered everything that we've done to offend his name. Coming into that throne room of grace in the midst of our recognition of our own poverty and our own need. Not coming in with arrogance, not coming in knowing everything, but knowing this one thing, that there's only one name given under heaven whereby men might be saved. Coming in and believing that when we pray, God hears us. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin and I'll heal their land. Jesus said, now my eyes will be open and my ears will be listening for the prayer that is prayed in this place. It's time to pray, folks. It's time to pray. It's not about a program. I'm not talking about a program. It's time to pray. It's life or death for people now. It's time to pray. We've come to the very border of becoming a godless nation. It's time to pray. It's time for you and I to go down on our knees and begin to petition God. It's time for us to make a decision. As Joshua said to the people of his day, if it seemed difficult for you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you're going to serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Choose this day, choose this day. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. Choose to stand, choose to be a light, choose to be a man and woman of prayer. Choose to be in right relationship with men and God. Choose to do it God's way. Choose to walk inside of the boundaries of the text of scripture. Choose it with all your heart. Only the prayer meeting can save America. Nothing else is going to make a difference. We are all that's left. As Aaron once did, we're the only thing that stands between a rebellious people and the wrath of a holy God. We have played away our day of grace in this nation. We have snubbed our noses at God too long. We've entered into the fields of the fatherless Forgetting that God's word says 50 million babies have been aborted in this nation. And we're going into the schools of those we didn't kill in the womb and telling them there is no God. We have entered into the fields of the fatherless. And God says, when you do that, I will rise up and defend them. We've crossed the line in this society. The only thing left is the prayer meeting. The only thing left is you and I. Going again to our knees with lives as much as we know, walking in obedience to what God has asked us to do and with hearts filled with faith and with a passion in our heart that says, oh God, oh God, this is my prayer most every morning now. I say, Lord, if New York City, if people in this city go to hell, let it be because they had a choice. Let it be because they knew and rejected the truth. But don't let anybody end up there who never heard. I pray God for an awakening in this city and every church. I don't care what name's on the door anymore. Oh, Jesus, son of God, visit the people who come to your house. Visit our parks, our businesses, our schools. Visit us, God, as you've done in the days of old. I know what God can do. I know he can visit this society. It looks so big to us, it looks so insurmountable, but that's always the way it's been throughout the course of history. Enemy armies gather, they've got the superior armor, they've, they've got the, the upper side, seeming to have all the advantage and all God's people have left is faith. It's so ironic, we start, we end up where we should have started. And we turn to him again. The only hope for America, folks, is a spiritual awakening. Where men and women wake up, where the church of Christ wakes up, where we begin to realize where we are, what we have done. We begin to understand that it's not God's heart to judge, it's in God's heart to be merciful. 
and his mercy will be there until we reach the point where our thoughts are continuously evil. As the people of God, it's so important now that our minds become shrouded in this book. And as Paul said, whatever is a virtue, whatever is of good report, whatever is praiseworthy, whatever is lovely, think on these things and the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. It's time to get out of the seat of the scornful. It's time to stop associating with sinners. If we're associating for any other reason but winning them to Christ. It's time to make the break, folks. It's time to get oil in our lamps. We don't have that long. Madmen are eventually going to get access to weapons of destruction. That's a given. It's only a matter of time. And do you know that New York City is the number one target of most of these insane people? How long do you think we have? And the number one target in New York City is Times Square. Where are we? (laughs) Of all people, we should be praying more than anybody else. (laughs) I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to stir you. We're going home soon. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. Whether Christ returns for us or we go to him first, I don't know. But soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. I want to challenge you to pray like you've never prayed before. Stand for God like you've never stood before. You have to have a vision of yourself. You have to see how important you are to the kingdom of God. I'm talking to everybody here. You are important to the kingdom of God. You are the only one that stands between your family and the judgment of God. Do you understand that? You're the only one that stands between God and this boss that you hate and the workers that stab you in the back. They're going to a Christless eternity. Do you understand? You're the only one left. There's nobody else. They're not going to hear it anywhere else. There's only one person left standing that can separate them from death eternally and it's you. And don't underestimate the power of the prayer meeting. You're going to see that tonight. A man in this church from the very inception of this church who hated God, who hated preachers, who railed on everything we did here, screamed at us out on the street, threatened to bomb us, and yet gave his life to Jesus Christ just a few months ago. All things are possible to him who believes. Are we in the minority? Yes, absolutely as Christians. But I want to remind you that all through history, Gideon, Esther, Moses, David, and the list goes on and on of God waiting until there was no chance but his own intervention. And all he wanted and looked, searched for is somebody who would believe him. Somebody who would come into his presence and say, I don't care how big Goliath's mouth is. He has defied the armies of the living God. You don't do that without a consequence. You don't boast against God without a consequence. You don't stand against God without a consequence. Oh, we're about to reap the whirlwind. But I pray that your pray, prayer be as mine is, let there be an awakening. An awakening where people just wake up and begin to realize I've got to get right with God. My prayer is, oh God, turn our park benches in Central Park into prayer meetings. Turn businesses and schools into prayer meetings. Just just come sovereignly, come powerfully, come in a way that nobody could touch the glory. Nobody could say I did this because of something I did. Nobody could touch the glory. Let it just be the mercy of Almighty God that touches this city in these last moments of time. You see, that's why there's such a battle in your mind right now. Devil fears you going into the prayer closet with faith. 
The devil fears a surrendered life because his kingdom has been destroyed and demolished by throughout history. He knows that he's been alive a lot longer than you and I, and he knows what happens when somebody's abandoned to the purposes of God. My altar call this morning is very simple. God helped me to win the battle in my mind. It's for the person who says, I'm not going to pretend there isn't a battle there. There is. I want to be happy. I, I want to live in comfort. I, I struggle in some areas in my life. And, and the devil tries to tell me I'm never going to get the victory. It's never going to change. But that's not what the word of God says. And today it's just people getting up and coming to the front of this auditorium or wherever you're listening and saying, Lord, I, I just have to trust you. There's a raging battle in my mind. I, I have to trust God that if I choose to go in the direction of your word, that you will be my strength and my deliverer in my high tower. That will become my testimony. You will fill this vessel with oil that there will be light in me. For you told us we're the light of the world. That I'll not be a marginal player standing terrified on a hilltop in the last moments of society as we know it. But I will be, as David was, one of those running down to face the giant. I will stand before Pharaoh like Moses did. I will be a man. I'll be a woman of prayer. I will believe when nothing my natural eye sees can show me a way to victory. I will believe in my heart for the words that you've spoken to me. I will stand for those who don't have a voice to cry out for themselves. I will stand for this young generation who are despairing and don't even know there's a God. I will stand for them. I will pray for them. I will believe you, God, for them. I will stand and believe for an awakening in a nation. When everything in the natural stands against it, I will stand and believe it. Even you, God, said to Ezekiel, I sought for a man that I should not have to judge the nation. Oh, God, let that be us, each of us, that we would stand in the places that we're given and win the battle of our mind. Father, I thank you for this with all my heart. I praise you for it. In Jesus' name. And we're going to stand in just a moment. And for those who really want to win this battle of the mind, you just, you want to win it. I want to walk with God. I want to make a difference. I want my life to count. I want to have oil for this generation. I want to be a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. If that's the cry of your heart, I'm going to ask you to slip out of your seat wherever you are and just come and join with me here at the front of this altar. And we're going to pray together in the annex. Do the same. North Jersey campus and at home. Just stand up in your living room. Let's stand together, please. You can go to the either exit in the balcony. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. We're going to worship just for a few moments. Then we'll come back and we'll pray together. Praise God. Say hi. This is Tyler. Thomas, his dad plays the piano here. And uh, this is what we're fighting for, folks. For Tyler and probably hundreds of thousands other Tylers in this nation who are being raised and told there is no God. This is what we're fighting for. And you tell me now if it's not a battle worth fighting. If it's not worth you and I making the break from everything that holds us captive and making the choice to live for God to be poured out for the sake of others and to believe that these little ones, thousands and thousands of these little ones will one day stand and praise God for all of eternity. That's the cry of my heart. Can you wait? Can you wait? I don't know about you, but I'm not letting them go without a fight. I'm not letting the devil have this generation. You know, Moses was all alone, just him and his brother. 
people were of a doubtful mind. And, but he stood before Pharaoh and said, no deal, we all go. We go, our kids go. I want to turn around and see the people over there. You want your money? What is it that you're looking for? Hey, can you sing? Can you sing? Is he singing his song? You sing, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in the sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. <laughs> there they are. There's everybody. There they are. Can you wave? Can you wave and say hi to everybody? Ah, that's it. All right. Father, we dedicate these little ones to you. God, we ask you in Jesus' name, give us the grace and the strength to live as men and women of God. Give us spiritual power and authority to stand against the forces of darkness that stand against this generation. Help us, Lord, to recognize that this is a battle for the souls of men and women and children. Help us, God, to live outside of our own comforts and our own view of success, what our lives should be, and to embrace the will that you have for us. Help us to understand your word when we read it. Give us faith in our hearts and give us power in our prayers. Oh, Jesus, Son of God. Oh, Jesus, Son of God. I come to you today simply because I know who you are. I know your heart. I know your heart. So God, give us the power we need, Lord, to stand in this generation. Give us victory in our minds. And we thank you for it, God, with all of our heart. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah.